Hey guys, welcome back. So in previous videos, we have covered how can we create persisted queries? How can we execute those persisted queries from React application? And we are good, okay? Now in this video, we will see how can we execute the same persisted query from Android application. So what I have done, I have created a new persisted query, query one, and we see this beautiful result. And if we copy this uh, URL, it's same actually, but it's okay. We are getting this result. Now I want to execute this query from my Android application. So the very best first basic prerequisite is we need to have Android Studio on our laptop. So just go to this website developer.android.com, download it, install it. And then once we are ready, we just need to open Android Studio. Click on file, new, new project and it will ask for which kind of project I want to create. I want to create it for phone, which type of activity. Let's go with the basic activity. Click on next, uh, the application name. So let's put uh, uh, tech talk. Oh, let's not put tech talk. Let's put my app v2, simple. Uh, package name whatever we want to put where we want to save it uh, which language you want to go for Kotlin or Java let's go with Java and the SDK so I have selected the, the maximum I can see here 33 click on finish it might take some time so let's wait Once it is ready, we'll see uh, we are going to work on few files. Main activity dot Java is the one where we are going to put our logic, business logic. So we can compare it with our service implementation class, selling model, where we put our business logic. Correct. Let it load. I want to show few more files where we will do some changes and then we should be good. Okay, here we go. So we see manifest file. We see Java and we see resources. Okay. And inside Java, we see the main activity. Let's not talk about first fragment, second fragment. Main activity is where we are going to change some code. Resources are where we have the resources, drawable layout. Layout is nothing but the what we what view we see on the UI. So for example, if we, if I just click on activity main, which where we are going to work, this is the UI of my phone. Okay. So the very first thing is we need to put uh, since we are going to execute our query which is on our local host correct and it's not a public API. So uh, uh, we need to add some network configuration. So what we can do is just create a new file. Let's name it as my network rules. I have created this new file and I already have the code. I will just copy this code here. We'll paste it. Let's understand what it is. It says so this is the IP of my localhost. Now we will not use localhost, we'll not use 127.0.0.1. We need to use from Android Studio, we will use 10.0.2.2 because this is how it uh, it will route your uh, the API to the localhost. After this, we need to include this my network rules file in the manifest file. So what we will do again, I have uh, it's handy. I will just copy it. This so I need to add this network security rules here. So I will just add it. Just make sure you are you use the right one because anyways, uh, the tool will tell if it is wrong. It will tell there is no such file exists. It will become red. It's nice behavior. After that, we need to allow, we need to give some permission to uh, emulator, basically to access the internet, to access the Wi-Fi, to access the state, uh, the network state. So again, we need to add these permissions. So what we are doing is we are allowing in network state, internet and Wi-Fi. Okay. The next thing is what we need to do. 
we need to add a dependency we are going to use volley uh, for api so we'll go to gradle script we'll select the module uh, build dot gradle one scroll down to the last we should find this dependencies section and add our dependency and if we hover over here we can just sync now it will just uh, compare it with your maven dependency so like we add in the pom.xml and it downloads similar way it will also download once it is ready now let's move on now we need to change the view in the view what we will add we will add some text view just consider uh, map it with the text field text view where we want to show some message so if i just click on activity main.xml which is my primary view i see this ui here we can see split just to see corresponding xml file now let's not uh, see whatever is written here i have something else so i'll just copy it and paste it and let's understand what it is written i am using linear layout as soon as i select it it will just show me right hand side what is selected so this is the linear layout inside that i have another linear layout just this area inside this area i have used this text view just consider it's a text field id is my text view and i'm just printing some static text which is hello which i am going to override from the api response the persisted api response now this id is uh, something which i am going to use in my main activity to access this text view okay let's go to main activity dot java and uh, to save the time let me just copy paste this whole file which i have already created and i will make sure i will put it in uh, uh, the git repository and i will provide the url Now let's understand what we have in this main activity dot java file. We are creating this request queue, and we have this URL. URL is nothing but the persisted query URL, right? And this is the default method. Whenever we create this new activity, this on create method will be created. Okay. Inside that we are creating. Uh, we are just sent setting the content view. Let's not worry about it because this is the default one. Which when uh, whenever you will create a new uh, project this will come the main part is the new method which we have added which is fetch persisted query what we have written is using volley api first we are creating the view the queue and then this url what we have the persisted query okay we are creating the request now instead in this request if you notice what we have is we have the url and it's a get call okay and we are also setting the headers so that's why i have overridden because it's a local host call it's not open it's behind authentication so uh, that's why i have overridden the get headers method and i'm just passing the content type and authorization uh, a basic authorization now question might come we have the username and password which is default for admin is admin admin how can we uh, change it to basic authorization so there are tools available online we can use postman or we can uh, use this authorization tool also so if you'll just search on the internet uh, create a basic auth header just click on any one of them which is looks promising and admin admin and it will generate a basic authorization we can use postman also uh, so let's put the header so we are good uh, url and header what we are doing is we are setting the text view uh, inside text view we are setting the response what we are getting from this uh, request so on response whatever response we are getting uh, from this api we are just setting response dot to string okay which is nothing but uh, this response so we are just setting this response now 
how we are accessing this text view here i was talking about the id which we have created the text view my text view if you go to activity main.xml this is the id my my text view so this is how we are accessing this text view and then we are finally setting the text view simple so we are accessing it and we are setting the value which we are getting from the volley uh, we are tr triggering it from volley api and we are getting the response simple let's save it now to run it uh, first we need to add the devices so if you don't see the devices uh, in the in the, on the right hand side you will find the device manager just click on the device manager and here you will find this create a device it, uh, we can also connect uh, if you have the physical device you can also connect with Wi-Fi pair using Wi-Fi but I have done it just for virtual click on create a device and then uh, we have the options available for example for which device you want to create it I uh, just select any one of them and for which device um, so just select click on next next and finally finish so once you are done with this you should ideally see the app which is nothing but the app what we have just created select that app and also the emulators what we have uh, I mean the devices what we have just added select any one of them and click on uh, the run app let's run it and it might take some time We can also see the logs here. We just need to click on run and starting up. And bingo, if I zoom it. We are getting the same JSON response. It's a raw data, of course, because that is how we have printed. But it is just manipulation. Once we get this information, we can create JSON array, JSON object. Using those JSON object, we can create HTMLs. It's just that information we need to fill in the uh, in the layout view. That's it. So thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope it will be um, uh, it will add something to your uh, capability. Thank you so much for watching.